Hi everyone, it's Lali here. I'm in my messy studio and at the moment I am deep into paper and bubble wrap and tissue and tape and I am packing some paintings for shipping. So here we have two that are ready and I have to tell you after my latest online show I have had so many parcels to make but before I finish I thought I'd share with you how I do that because I know I would have loved to find uh, information on that and I looked for lots of information online when I started shipping artworks but um, it's really a process of finding your own way so I'm just going to show you my way of doing it. It's not perfect probably and there are many ways but I hope you find this helpful. So over here we have a painting called Where Wishes Bloom and it's about to travel all the way from France to the United States so I really want it to be nice and secure. So for that I'm going to need a nice box so here it is just here. So this is made of two parts and they slide into each other making a really really nice and tight parcel that's really just the right fit for the painting and also it makes it very sturdy. The other thing I've got here are some um, MDF panels and they are quite thin but they are very very sturdy also and I have had them cut to size at the DIY store so to the exact size of my painting. Here is a little cloth because I have just uh, wiped all the surface and the edges because there could be some sawdust here so I don't want that into the parcel. Over here I have got some bubble wrap and I have already pre-cut it because cutting this from my big roll over there is a messy business so I really couldn't do that on camera. So here it is. Over there is some tissue paper. So this is the first layer that's going to be in contact with the surface of the painting. So it is acid free and this is important because you don't want uh, the cardboard or the bubble wrap or the, the MDF panel to be in direct contact with the painting. So this is a gentle safe way to protect the surface of the painting. And over here we've got plenty more materials. So. I've got a marker, a pencil, a stapler, a heavy duty one because I'm going to staple into some cardboard so I really want something that's fit for the job and I have a good pair of scissors. You do not want a pair of lousy scissors for this especially to cut your bubble wrap. So a good pair, a big pair of scissors is really important. You will need a ruler or a square set or whatever to measure and I'm going to use it to fold my corners also because here I have got some cardboard corners that I have cut and I'm going to show you how I fold them. Here are some labels to put on the parcel. I have the do not stack and this way up and of course we've got some tape over here. So. Inside the parcel before the layer of bubble wrap I try to use as little plastic as I can. So I have got my tissue paper, my cardboard corners and I have some paper craft tape here. So this is what I'm going to use and for the outer layers I'm still going to need some plastic tape. So I have some clear one here and this one is filament tape so it's very sturdy and I'm going to use it on all the corners and angles of my box to really protect them because this is the most vulnerable part. You have to bear in mind that your parcel is going to be handled by lots of people and machines so you really want to make sure it is well protected. I also have some tape here with the word fragile on it so I'm going to add that also to make sure this is visible on every side just as an extra precaution and this is a business card of course and the certificate of authenticity of the painting and a little gift because I really want uh, to make opening this parcel a joy for the person who's going to receive it and you know it's really great to add a few little extra touches that make it personal and make it really you. So I also have some fun washi tape here and some paper strings and here I've got a little stamp and some ink. 
And finally, here is something that I'm going to use actually as the first step today because before I do anything with this parcel, I'm going to cover my hair with this. Of course, you wouldn't want any cat hair in your parcel, but you wouldn't want any artist hair either. So I'm going to put this on first thing and then I'm going to wash my hands and then I'll join you at the table here. See you in a moment. Okay, I'm going to start by folding my corners. So first I want to apologize because the camera is way, way up above my head and probably when I walk around in the studio, when I grab the materials and everything, it's going to shake a little bit. So I'm very sorry about that. There's not much I can do about it. So for now, my little corners. So they are made out of a, a square and you just remove one fourth of your square and then you just cut the corners. It's very, very easy to do. And then I'm going to fold this right here and here again, like this. And then it really depends on how thick your painting is because sometimes I like to paint on canvases that have really deep edges so I can adjust the height of my corner here. So this one is a very thin painting. So I'm just going to fold it about here, like such. So when I fold both sides over like this, it creates a little corner and it's going to really protect the angle of my painting. Okay, I'm going to put them on the side and I'm going to get my painting. Okay, here is the painting and it's all wired and ready to hang. I'm going to center it on my tissue paper here. And then I'm going to fold the tissue paper around all the edges of the painting, making sure that every area of the edges and the corners is really covered. And I'm going to secure it in place with a bit of tape. Here in the middle, I've got two sheets of tissue paper that are overlapping. So I'm going to start here and secure them with a bit of tape. And I have pre-cut all my little pieces of tape. It makes it easier. Then I'm going to fold this side here and secure the corner with the tape again. Okay, so now is the time to add my corners. So I'm going to slide that part under the painting here and then wrap it around the corner. I'm making sure it fits nicely and then I can staple it in place or if you want to use tape, you can use tape. Here we are. And I'm still going to add a little bit of tape just to make sure it doesn't slide off. Okay, here we are. All the corners are nice and secured. And so my corners of the painting are really, really well protected now. And I'm going to get my next layer, which is um, my pair of MDF panels. And we're going to sandwich the, the painting in between. Here is my first panel. And now I'm going to place my painting on top. And then I'm going to place my second panel. So I have already wiped them to make sure there is no sawdust left. And now I'm going to secure everything in place with tape, the same paper craft tape. And I'm just going to slide the whole thing a little bit off the table. This is going to allow me to place the tape around everything without having to lift my, my sandwich so that everything can really stay in place. So I'm grabbing my paper tape again and I'm going to start at one corner and I'm going all the way across with my tape. 
and then I'm going under and back and I'm making sure it's really really tight and then I'm going to rub with the handle of my scissors to make it extra secure Here we are and next I'm going to place my certificate of authenticity here on my business card and I'm going to secure them in place with some sweet washi tape. Okay now I'm going to remove the painting and it's very handy if you have a second table at the ready for this and I'm going to lay my bubble wrap over the table and then I'm going to bring back my little sandwich again. Okay, so here is my bubble wrap and I'm going to place my painting on top. I hope you can see properly because the sun is setting right now, just uh, on my left here. So uh, it's going to create some lights and shadows, but I like that actually. Okay, so I've made sure to have a good margin and, and I'm going to wrap this over my painting and I'm securing it with a bit of tape and wrapping around again. So I'm actually going to do this twice with the same uh, size of bubble wrap because you're going to see that as I wrap this side here and this other one, it's going to create some cushioning on two of the sides and then I'm going to flip uh, the painting around and do it again so I have that cushioning on all four sides. I'm securing it again with tape. Now I'm going to roll this, secure it with tape. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. Okay, and now I'm going to remove the painting again to my other table while I add my second sheet of bubble wrap. And now I'm placing my sandwich this way and I'm going to do the same thing again. Okay, here we are. So that was the last time I used my paper tape because now I'm going to switch to my clear tape because I really want to make sure that this is sealed so that if any moisture happens for whatever reason, it doesn't get into my lovely little painting. So I need to secure this part here. I need to secure this here where my bubble wrap overlaps. And then I'm going to go around all the sides and corners and make sure this is super tight and secured. So here is my clear tape and I'm going to start at one corner and go all around. Okay, that's it for my edges and I'm still going to add some more to make it extra tight. Okay, here we are. The hardest part is done and now I'm going to immediately do one thing. It is to write the name of the painting because sometimes if you batch things and you have several paintings that are wrapped in bubble wrap and you can't remember which one it is, it's really, really not what you want. And now is the time to add my little gift on top. So I have prepared a little set of greeting cards in there. And I'm going to add some of my washi tape again. And now just for fun, I'm going to add a little bit of string here. Here it is nice and curly and I'm done with the first stage of packing this. I have really prepared the inside here and now I need to take care of the box that it's going to go into. But for now, I'm going to take a good break because this is actually a little hard on my back and I need to drink a bit of water and maybe make myself a nice cup of tea and I will see you in a moment. Okay, I'm back and now we're going to 
prepare our box. So it has two parts that slide into each other. One is slightly wider than the, the other one. So this one actually is the bottom and the other one is the cover. So I'm going to fold it like this. And for now, I'm just going to use my paper tape to secure it all. And I'm just taping the bottom, but I'm not going to tape the cover for now because I'm going to do this once my painting is inside. But for now, I'm just going to fold it and I'm going to slide the cover over the bottom part. Here we go. And so then once my painting is inside, I can just slide this part up again so it fits perfectly to the size of the painting. Now I'm not going to place the painting inside right away because it would be a bit too loose and I still need another layer of bubble wrap around that. I'm making it double so it's thicker and I don't need it to go all the way to the corners because um, this is thicker actually. This is not as thick as the corners. So this is going to compensate. Okay, and now I'm going to need another piece of bubble wrap that's at least three times the side of my painting here. And I'm going to fold it lengthwise and then I'm going to place it all around like this without taping it in place at all. And this is just going to really help me place the painting into the box with cushioning all around. And this way it's not going to move at all. And now I'm just going to scrunch it like this. And I'm going to find the middle and I'm going to place it at the very bottom of my painting. And like this. And I'm going to get my box. And the reason that I'm not taping this to the painting is that it's loose enough that it's really going to fit into every corner of the inside of the box. So I'm just grabbing my two sides here, lifting the whole thing, sliding it inside my box taking my time and you see here I've got a bit of a gap so that's why this is loose and I have not taped it because I'm going to push this into the the gap this is really tight it's not moving at all inside the box and now I can tape this in place so now the painting is in the box and I'm going to secure all of these edges and making sure that everything is super tight so this here, this here, I want absolutely no edges sticking out, especially this here as well, because I really want to make sure that um, even if the, the parcel was, was going to fall or um, if someone was going to slide it on the floor or whatever, it would not get damaged. So I'm going to start by really securing the two pieces of the box together very tightly. And for that, I'm going to use my filament tape. So this is what I'm really going to use for the outside of the box mainly, because it's really, really strong and also flexible, and it's really going to make the box a lot more sturdy. So I'm going to circle around the box here and here, and because I have this little edge here, I'm going to start there. I'm pressing here, and here I'm pressing the second part. So it's as tight as possible. Okay, and I'm going to add more tape at the junction of the two boxes. And I'm probably going to go twice, so they really, really overlap very nicely. Okay, and I'm going to do the top and the bottom. Okay, that's my second side done and I still have some corners that are vulnerable on those other sides so I'm going to also add some tape around there.
okay the hardest part is done now and it's really really nice and secure but I want to make it extra secure so I'm going to add more tape here and over there this is really to protect the parcel from any moisture if it were to uh, be left on a on a wet floor at some point I don't really know what the journey of this painting is going to be like but I really want it to be safe so I'm just going to take um, every precaution that I can Okay, I'm done with the filament tape now, but I'm still going to add more tape and I'm going to use the this one here to add to the sides because I really want the sides here, the thinner ones, to be really covered in tape completely so that they could slide safely on the floor. And even if they were to slide on a wet floor or be left in a puddle, this tape here will protect them at least uh, a little bit. So this is the part I'm talking about. I really want to cover all of that cardboard. Okay, so now all my edges and corners are well protected. The only part that's still bothering me is this area here. And I really want to make sure that the two sides are really, really strongly stuck together so I'm going to add more of my tape here um, along the, the junction of the two boxes. So I'm going to place my tape with the warning right under here but even though this is the top part of my box this is the, the most stable one and the heaviest one so this should actually be the bottom of the, of the parcel when it's handled. So I'm just going to put the words facing this way just to help making it clear. That's a lot of red and white. It's kind of Christmassy, but um, I also want to add a personal finishing touch, just like for a painting, really. So I'm just going to add a few butterflies. Here we are. This baby is ready to fly. And I hope you found this useful. It's kind of a lot of work to package a painting, but I really um, want to make it as secure as possible and to really pay attention to the way that I do it because it's a great joy both for me and for the person who's going to receive the art and it's also a big commitment for the person who purchases it and uh, shipping costs quite a bit. So it's really important to make sure everything is done right and safely and with care and attention. If you've got any questions, of course, please let me know and I will add the, the supplies and all the materials that I'm using uh, in my blog post. Have a great day!